Hello. Hey everyone, so I am Jamie. I get to be with Dr. Sarah Vivona today. That's my phone letting me know that Integrative Health and Wellness is live. Is live. Is live, that I might want to watch. Being dedicated with notifications. <laughs> Integrative Health and Wellness. What do they usually say in videos? Like this video, subscribe. Tag subscribe. your friends. What else? Put your notifications on. Oh, look, Jamie's watching. Hi, Hi Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> That's so nice of you to watch. I should probably turn my phone down so we don't have backlash from me talking. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, I have the pleasure of being with you guys every Wednesday with either her or Dr. Colin Consales from Integrative Health and Wellness. And um, I just kind of get to pick their brains about... Oh, we forgot the mic. One sec. Technical difficulties. Holiday time. Forgive us. You should have it. Because <laughs> she speaks so much softer than I do, so we'll try to give her the microphone. I got it. How's that? You guys hear us? <laughs> if it gets scratchy, let me know. All right. So today's topic is exciting for me. You know, um, cause we just, everybody has this issue at some point in time, somebody, everybody has belly issues, <laughs> right? Yes. And so last week I had the pleasure of talking with Dr. Colin about poop. So <laughs> that's like lower belly. Yes. So now I get to talk to you about upper belly stuff. Yes. Cause you didn't want to talk about poop. Not really. I mean, she would. I would. It just wasn't on the high priority. Just the questions you wanted to ask. I was just. <laughs> it's poop. It we all do. It works for Dr. Cullen. All right. So, let's talk more than less about poop and less about. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> and like just work on like upper belly stuff. So, what? Like, what is, like, acute upper digestive issues? What what problems would constitute that? So, upper digestion is pretty much stuff like stomach up. So, it wouldn't necessarily usually be, like, gut problems, pooping problems, all the IBS and Crohn's, all that wouldn't necessarily be grouped in in upper digestion. So, common ones would be nausea, stomach aches, could be bloating, could be um, indigestion. Like acid reflux? Acid reflux is another one. Okay. And I mean, we've all experienced this at one point in time or another. I mean, probably if you're human, you've probably gotten sick or puked or, I don't know, just had a belly ache. I want to talk to you if you haven't. Cause what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So what, like, what causes some of these issues? Other so, than food, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, you can get food poisoning for sure. And uh, we actually can help people with that. It has, with food poisoning, it's actually, you need a combo of like gallbladder support and releasing bile because part of bile's job is almost like a glue and that it would bind up toxins or poisons or rotten food and make you poop it out so that they don't just hang around in your intestines and cause the pain or nausea or vomiting or whatever else comes with food poisoning. You also could look at um, being tested for like we call them binders. So it'd be something that you would take that would bind up toxins in your stomach, in your intestines so that they're not floating around. And we have a handful of one here, and so it's all individual on like which one you would need and which one would work for you. But it and definitely helps us how you would feel if you have food poisoning. So I know charcoal, like a lot of people say when you have food poisoning, charcoal is a great go-to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We have two supplements that have charcoal in them. Okay. And we have other things in them too, kind of depending on what you would need and so when they come in here like somebody like you want them to come in here with food poisoning yes yes we always want to see you at your worst because 
you ate something that was bad, and now you're probably not just maybe Jamie's favorite, favorite and vomiting, um, or you could, I suppose you could have diarrhea with food poisoning too. But the best you can, like if you can get off the couch or the bed, we want you here um, because it's acute. It's it's a major problem for your body, and if you wait until you're feeling better, maybe you're not vomiting, but you're just kind of queasy your body may be like, yeah, I'm handling it, so I don't need any help. And instead of having a problem that could have maybe only lasted, I don't know, a day, you now have this week or longer of eh feeling. So how would you know, like, wh- how would I know if I had food poisoning or like the, a flu, like the, and like the stomach bug? Like the stomach, I mean, there's really not a f- stomach flu, right? It's just... A virus, like yeah, a stomach it's bug. Yeah, a virus. I'm, they label them different things, but it's kind of like where it, it affects you. And uh, I mean, they have a flu virus that can show up as like sinus headache, headaches, like temperature with and, vomiting. Yeah, and then they have a, a flu now. They like, classify as more like the GI vomiting thing. So it's a virus. The virus is a virus, and it'll just react different to your body. But, I mean, if you ate something that tasted bad and then, and then you got sick, you, you might be leaning more towards food poisoning. Um, but honestly, you'd probably actually need to come into the clinic and get checked because we'll have um, our tester kits that have different things that will point us more, is it more like your immune system, leaning more towards like similar to how a virus might affect you, uh, or is it more like foods or just kind of you need binders basically okay so how often let me rephrase it like how long so you're saying if i if i came to get help the f- stomach and i had a stomach bug or food poisoning it just wouldn't last as long if i came in potentially okay. yeah we we just help people feel better we're not necessarily treating anything particularly uh, legally you know you can't say that we can't say we treat this and that and that because Technically, they in our culture nowadays, you need to have certain standards to then say, okay, you've been diagnosed with this, this, and this. And so we never say we treat this. It's more like we're looking at the body overall and seeing which areas are testing well, which areas aren't, what kind of stuff fix it, and then you can kind of get this overall picture that most people can figure out what it's helping, but it's one of those legal things that just frustrates us, but I understand. So what, like, what can you do if someone came in? Oh, it's so funny because now I don't. If I like, if someone has ulcers, mm-hmm. can you help someone with ulcers or gastritis? You Is can gas- help people improve their health. <laughs> and now you watch our videos, you'll see how we word things. And so there's always a cause for any disease, any ill health, basically. And that's what we're looking at identifying is what's going on in the stomach that created the perfect condition for ulcers. And we are then correcting that, not necessarily the ulcer, just the underlying cause, so that as you get better, naturally you have less ulcers, per se. One of our happy side effects um, in the goal, but Ulcers generally are caused by either like bacterial infection in the stomach called H. pylori or um, not enough of the good stomach acid, which would be the hydrochloric acid. And instead you have something called pyruvic acid, which still is an acid, but isn't necessarily efficient at digesting foods. We're really kind of keeping the stomach the environment it needs. And so, I mean, if you can't digest foods, if If you just sit a hunk of meat on your counter, eventually it rots and it putrefies. The same thing happens in your stomach and in your intestines if you can't digest them properly. Hmm. And oftentimes that kind of gaseous mix then can erode stomach linings, which would be gastritis, or create like ulcers, which is just sores in the stomach. Okay, so I know, I mean, I've had two people come here who had constant burping. I mean, they were just 24 set like belching 
all the time and um, they haven't been able to get help anywhere else but mm-hmm. here so I just want to give you guys a shout out for that because I have no idea what you guys did what their problem was but it was so awesome because that is they were sort of young people so I mean that's just a huge problem <laughs> I don't care how old you are but don't want to belch I mean, as that's much. <laughs> really awful. And then acid reflux, like, this is such a horrible thing because it hurts. It's very painful. Like, yeah. And then, like, hiatal hernias. Yeah. This is the craziest thing to me because I was, I have no idea. I don't even know what a hiatal hernia is. Mm-hmm. So that that's a common, I would say. And, yes, you can be actually diagnosed with a hiatal hernia, and they'll do x-rays, and that's where you see your stomach kind of pumping up through the diaphragm into the lung cavity and generally there's no treatment for that. They do have surgeries if it's like a massive amount, like your whole stomach's up there, they'll do surgeries and pull it back down. But most people, they just tell you, oh, you have this, deal with it. Which is awful. It is awful. I mean, it's like not, and like I remember, like I wasn't, I'm not sick, but like I want to throw up. And yeah, it's a constant mainly it presents itself as like constant not na- like low grade nausea uh no appetite um kind of like pain too in the stomach it's like upper pain bloating. not like lower pain yeah, it's like, like right up. over the stomach and then it's also the great mimicker it can actually cause any other problems too because the stomach and the diaphragm go right around your spinal cord and if mm. that can then irritate any nerve really and we had a a young woman in with burning crazy shoulder pain and I think I have a blog on this and um, she did all the standard medical tests nothing came back abnormal with her shoulder and she had heavy-duty painkillers she was prescribed and it didn't touch it and so at like last result she's like I'll try here and she kept testing for like stomach and the hernia. And I was like, okay. And so we, there's treatments where we go in and we first look at is something pulling the diaphragm down wrong, pushing it into the stomach, or is the stomach itself just too high up? And she had all of them. And we actually, part of the treatment is yanking the stomach back down. It's not fun, but it does its job. And immediately her shoulder pain was gone. Like, Wow. Instantly. And it's pretty cool. That's awesome. And so the hernia doesn't always have to be nausea or anything like that. It can be any weird thing. It could be headaches. It could be shoulder pains. It could be back pains. Anything. And it's not like, I love that. I mean, I, I would have never, she would have never known that. No. Like, how would anybody figure that out had she not come here? So mm-hmm. I love that you guys. And, you know, it's so crazy because we actually had somebody walk in today and she was asking, like, what our patients are like, you know. And I said, it's so, it's, we have such a wide variety of patients. Mm -hmm. Like, I would say half of our patients are people who have tried more, like, exhausted every other avenue. Mm -hmm. And they have no, they have no idea where else to go to get help that they Mm -hmm. end up coming here. Mm -hmm. And then the other half are people who do take care of themselves and they do feel well. But they want to keep that up and learn how to feel better, right. you know. Which is the goal for everyone. <laughs> and it's so crazy because as you get treated here, it's like you get treated in steps. Yes. It's like yes. one, you like treat, it's like one thing gets, you get one thing going, take care of that. And then just like you're saying, it'll get rid of some symptoms by fixing that problem. And then you just keep working on it. Um, that Yeah, I mean... We're not as simple as just, you have stomach problems, I have headache problems. But we're not that simple, unfortunately. And most people, by the time they get here, are, what, 30 to 50-ish is probably the average age. And so you've had 30 to 50 years of damage done to your body that it's going to take time to unravel what it was. Um, and even most of us aren't even born perfectly healthy anymore. So you don't even get that benefit that we used to have. And so it takes time, and there's usually lots of things that aren't functioning well, 
and you actually usually have a lot of symptoms that you don't even know you have because you have like I had migraines so that's a pretty obvious symptom and it's pretty painful and so they I may have all these other symptoms that you just it's normal for you to live that way mm. and so you don't even realize like well maybe I'm tired or maybe I don't know I get bloated or oh whatever it is until like my migraines are gone and now it's suddenly like oh now I'm so tired but really you've always been tired type of thing mm. it was always there uh, it's just more apparent because something else isn't bothering you even more so you normal for people to come in being like now my elbow hurts is that weird no probably always somewhat hurt or maybe not so what about okay what about food like I, my grandmother used to always complain about food getting stuck mm. and she, she would have a hard time swallowing yeah um you like that's something somebody could come in here right like i, mean, I wish they, we would have known about you then can come in here for anything um that largely stems from again like the acid reflux type of problems and it anyone genetically also can be born with problems too but a lot of times it's like you have that acid wafting up into the esophagus and you know, the natural solution for the body is when things are irritated like if you keep getting like rug burns on your skin in the same area you're going to get scars and firmer tissues so that the body can not get broken as easily so the same thing usually happens with the esophagus is that that sphincter gets tight and tighter from all the scar tissue that's building up from the problem actually usually usually in the stomach is the, the why that's happening and so the sphincter can't open as much as it should when food goes through and foods get stuck and so I always tell patients that come in with this I can't guarantee we can necessarily fix how tiny the hole is and sometimes you definitely do need to get the surgery where they stretch it but we can definitely help you fix the underlying cause so that if you you know do need it you potentially won't need surgery again but I mean we've had patients that surprise me and they fix the underlying cause and then we can swallow anything no food gets stuck I'm like good that's amazing I like being pleasantly surprised <laughs> I think we need like a bell so that right oh, I always say this we need a bell like a um, like a what do I want to, like a success bell yeah right um, so if you guys are interested in learning more about like people who have had issues that have come in uh, I want to encourage you guys to go to our website it's ihwcenter.com and there's a tab that you can go to to find out what people have experienced when mm -hmm. they've come here things that and it's specific I love that mm -hmm. the website breaks it down so you don't have to look through hundreds of testimonies yeah. it's actually broken through you know you to like stomach issues so you can always look at that um, mm -hmm. I always encourage that because it's just so cool to hear what other people are saying that have got help here like have received help and had success through the treatments so it's super cool um, I want to let you guys know if you're watching this on a recording uh, I know a lot of you guys are busy at this time, but um, if you have any questions, if you have any topics you want us to address, uh, you just send us a message. We yeah. would love to reach out for you. We love likes. We love shares. <laughs> yeah. um, if you missed or want to see some things that we've talked about previously, you can always go to our YouTube channel. Uh, it's Integrative Health and Wellness. Just make sure when you do the and, what's that thing called? Oh, it's like an am ampersand or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Don't write integrative, uh, um, integrative health A N D. It's the and symbol, okay? <laughs> Whatever that's called. Then you'll find us on YouTube, and you'll be able to find all of our videos, all of our past conversations, um, and you have a lot of recipes out there too, which are really awesome. Yep. Absolutely love our cooking, and it's so simple. Um, so anyway, you guys can always check that out. Yep. You can give us a call if you want to come in and have any questions. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And uh, we're not going to be here next nope. uh, Wednesday. Holiday. So have a great happy holiday. <laughs>
See you in the new year. Bye, guys. <laughs>